Okay, part three of three of art and maybe. So uh, we looked at a little bit about the relationship between art and power. So after the 9-11 terrorism attack, many establishments around the United States organized Middle Eastern art exhibits and events. These events hoped to counter the growing anti-Muslim rhetoric. People believed art would be a venue for building bridges of cross-cultural understanding. Anthropologist Jessica Wenger argued that in fact these events may have had the opposite effect. These events presented an extremely narrow side of the Middle Eastern art world. All of the artists focus on Islam rather than the broad range of subjects and techniques that artists from the Middle East use to create art. By focusing only on one kind of good Middle Eastern art, Winger argued that these events reinforced the perceived differences. So, um, black girls playground game and construction of gender identity. In our first example, we considered how music can form a powerful part of the construction of gender, gen, gender and ethnic identity. In her ethnographic work, The Games of Black Girls Play, Kira Gant explores the way in which music defines the identities of American African-American girls. Specifically, Gant studied the, can, the oral kinesthetics of the game played by African-American girls. Kinesthetic or orality refers to the combination of body movements and voice. So these young girls learned to learned complicated jump rope games that furthered the rhythm, clapping and stomping and singing. Got noticed that the games were taught by one generation to the next and passed among children as well. These games embodied lessons of socialization for girls as well as practice musicality, which led to a more developed concept of music, rhythm, and movement as adults. Gott successfully challenged the stereotypes that attribute the musical patterns and body movements in African American to biological, and instead demonstrated that these are learned path patterns passed down by the process of enculturation. Gans also examined how the songs commonly used in games of these young girls had also been appropriated in pop music and movies. We may not always intrinsically think of power when we think of pop music and movies, but producers were repackaging the songs of these young girls and successfully selling them, making millions of dollars. As we have seen throughout this semester, economic power does translate into social and cultural power. The process of incorporating these songs into popular, popular forms of music creates an explicit portrait of ethnic, ethnicity and gender on a large scale. This reifies the link that many people's minds between young African American girls with musical games of jump rope. So how do art and media intersect? And just like all other forms of culture, art has irrevocably changed by the forces of globalization. New globalization media scape has radically changed the way images, videos, music, and other forms of art are shared and transmitted. In the 19th century, media was dominated by newspapers. Although the newspaper transformed the world when it first began being printed, the research of a paper copy of newspaper is not so great. In the 20th and 21st century, we have seen an ever-changing and growing mediascape. Mediascape is a potteri. 
I'll talk about a pottery later. Um, the introduction of radio, film, and television radically changed the way the world communicated with the 20, 20th century. The development of the internet has yet again re revolutionized communication, particularly with sharing of photos, videos, and other imagery. Let's close this chapter with some examples on the way in which the new mediascape has changed the experience of culture, art, and imagery. We'll first look at the power of art and imagery to shape our perception of the world. All images are purposely created, not only paintings, but also photographs. When you take a photograph, you choose your subject, you choose how, how to take your picture, what you want and what you don't want in the background, what angle, lighting, all that fun stuff. Then you decide whether the picture is good enough to share with others, or you just delete it. In a global age, an image moves around the globe almost instantly. These images have a powerful ability to shape our view of the world around us. Sometimes that shaping can be quite deliberate. In the study reading National Geographic, Lutz and Collins examine a role of National Geographic in particular role of the photographs found on these pages in shaping Americans' perceptive uh, perception around the world. Um, so basically, I'm going to boil all of this down and say that um, these photographs that are taken that don't show all of the reality of what's actually going on in the picture um, I tend to skew our perceptions of exactly what things look like and what they should look like. So when people go to those locations, they and they don't see the exact thing that they saw in like the National Geographic's magazine, they kind of get put off by it. But we do this with our pictures, and I noticed I did this with my pictures when I was doing my field work. Um, I would try to take out the modern, 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 the, the modern feel of the world around it by positioning myself in such a way that I could just get, say, the stone circle in there. So it is interesting. Think about it the next time you're taking pictures outside, how you choose what will and what will not be in the picture. So, ethnographic films and indigenous media. Filmmaking is becoming an important method for documenting ethnographic data, but filmmaking has always been a part of anthropology. Um, we've seen quite a few different um, ethnographic films in this course. The filmmaking allows viewers to engage on a multi-sensory level with the aspect of global fieldwork that might not come across as clearly in the written world. So um, we can go ahead and talk about Ken Guest, who's the writer of this book, the textbook, and his research in China. Guest was invited to partake in a two-week festival arranged by a local Chinese religious temple. Invitations to the festival are among the most sought-after privilege for ethnographers. For one thing, a general personal invitation undoubtedly reflects a gr growing relationship of trust and communication between the, ethnogra the ethnographer and the subject of study. So, while attending the festival, guests noticed that there were video crews recording the event. They were constantly presented throughout the ceremony and the festival. At one point, the head of the temple asked guests if he would consent to being interviewed. When guests returned to New York the next week, he discovered that he had become a new celebrity in local Chinese immigrant community. The video had made it back to New York before guests did and had been shared among immigrants so that they could that they too could partake in the celebration and festivities from their home country. 
and guessed the only non-Chinese person in the video was immediately recognizable. So, um, we've talked about the different landscapes of world art. So, if we were in class together, I'd have you guys talk about the landscape of art around the world. So kind of think about that. In what ways are you an artist? How do you use new forms of media technology to express your creativity and communicate this with others? So, concept chat. Which of the following would be an anthropologist, would an anthropologist consider art? Food, songs, clothing? It is D, all of the above. Fine art is typically distinguished from popular art in that A, it is associated with cultural elite. Evidence of artistic expression among humans go back up to 100,000 years ago. Let's see. An anthropological approach to art looks primarily at how art is embedded in the community. Studying the relationship between art and power tells us art can challenge and also reinforce dominant stereotypes. So kind of look at this. Have you bought authentic art from Pottery Barn or any other of the big name stores that are all about this authenticity of the from around the world. What did you think about it? Did you think it was ugly? Do you think it was pretty? Um, kind of how did it affect you? Anyway, that concludes chapter 15. Um, I will hopefully see you all in class on Friday is the plan so that we can go over how things are going and what you guys are thinking as far as for the rest of the semester. Okay, thanks. See you Friday.